Good morning, everyone. I'm Adam Sexton. Thank you for joining us. Until the last week of the town of Wolfboro had not elected a Democrat to the New Hampshire General Court since Woodrow Wilson was in the White House. When Edie Damaris won on Tuesday, she also became the first Democrat to flip a legislative seat in the U.S. from red to blue during the Trump presidency. As such, she turned into a bit of an internet sensation, unfamiliar territory for the near 50-year resident of Wolfboro, mother of four, grandmother of 10, and former small business owner who joins us this morning. Thank you, Representative-elect, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone's enjoyed a little armchair debate over this over the last week or so. You won, a Republican won in a different state house election down in Manchester, but everyone's sorting this out, reading the tea leaves. We want to know what you think. Was this a victory that you carved out on your own as sort of a longtime community member in Wolfboro, or was Wolfboro perhaps sending a message to the president? I think it's a mixture. I really do. Um, obviously, I'm very well known in Wolfboro. I've been there 50 years. And I want to make one, just one quick correction. I didn't own the Children's Center. It's okay. a nonprofit. Okay, so we, not we quite have a, a board of small directors. business founder, I guess, would be I was a way? small business founder, okay, there correct, we go. <laughs> which grew into a pretty big business before we were done for the town of Wolfboro. But, so you had a connection with the children of, this, of Wolfboro from dating back to the 1970s. A lot of people yes. know who you are there. Yes, many people know who I am. Uh, the, I, it's hard to say, you know, which happened because I think there there is some on the national, um, especially on the national level, that people are concerned. Uh, what I learned when I was meeting with people, because we had quite a few, we had seven small intimate groups where we could sit down and talk to people, Republicans, Democrats, and independents. And I did hear a lot that people are very concerned about the partisanship. They're, um, they don't like what is happening in Washington and they don't like seeing the two parties get behind walls and just shoot at each other. They really want people to work together. So I think at that level, definitely my message resounded with people that they want to see more working together. And which is what I have done in Wolfboro to um, start the businesses and the work that I have yeah, done. I was going to say, with so many GOP yes. voters there, as you were communicating to them, it, I guess you tried to stay on that track of saying, I'm going to be more of an independent voice. Obviously, you're still a Democrat, but... I am a Democrat. My values are definitely Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, but I have always worked bringing people together to achieve and get things done because you can't, you can't do it from one side or the other. We have to work together. Nonetheless, there is an aspect of this that is fairly remarkable. President Trump won Wolfboro, I think, by six or seven points. Uh, Mitt Romney yes. was victor there by double digits. Put this in context for us. As a Democrat running in Wolfboro, you probably didn't think this was going to happen. You did not imagine you'd be here, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I thought I knew that if, if anyone could do it, that because I was known in town that I had a good opportunity. And I found, I think, we have to step up, and, and that was the message that I had heard. I went to the Women's March, and, and we were told we needed to step up, and that if I'm going to do it, this is the time. So that's when you made your decision? Yes. You were there in D.C.? I was there, the scene my, for us. I was there with my daughter and two of my granddaughters, and um, we were standing there, and they, we heard the speeches, and my daughter just turned around and looked at me and said, come on, Mom, hmm. and so I did. And I'm guessing, yes. as a Democrat, you were probably thinking to yourself in this moment, um, these, are, these are battles that you fought, perhaps, uh, as a younger woman, and I did. here you are, uh, a grandmother, and uh, the same issues are coming up. Is that, was that sort of an impetus as well? That most definitely had a great deal to do with it, mm -hmm. because back in the 60s and 70s with the women's liberation and, and with women starting to fight for equal pay, which we still don't have, <laughs> and fighting for our reproductive rights, and I said, I can't have my granddaughters fighting the same fight. Hmm. You mentioned bipartisanship. What does that mean in a tangible sense for you once you are in the House? What are you going to do, I guess, to reach across the aisle? Well, it's one of 400, <laughs> so you, yeah. can't, you can't change the world in that. But I think there, especially in committees, is where I've heard that is the best opportunity for collegiality, for working together, and I am hoping at that level. And also, um, I know our Republican representatives in Wolfboro very well. I've known them both for quite a long time. And we're friends, and I think that perhaps we can work together. So I, I guess if I'm reading this correctly, if there's one big change you're going to try to bring, uh, we've seen over the last decade or so, House members are increasingly ideological, and you're going to try to turn that around a little bit, perhaps the more the old school way of doing business in the New Hampshire House? I would try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do my very best. and. Everything I've done, I've been told it's impossible, hmm. and we seem to manage to 
make it happen. So I, I think if we work hard enough, we can. Now, the Republican backlash against President Obama turned into the Tea Party. Uh, we see Democrats having a certain similar kind of energy at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of sort of foment and wanting to do something. Do you see there, there's a danger there that there could be overreach or that uh, things go in a, too far in a different direction? Where do you see all of this, this Democratic energy going? I think it's always possible. Um, I think that, that there could be overreach, but I think that if more people like me will stand up and try to bring it together that we can kind of temper that down. Um, I know that the people who worked on my campaign, there were many people who were, who were very excited and, and felt that we really needed to just step up and, and you know, put th these thoughts forward. But I held back because, you know, like the Northern Pass is a good example. Um, I very strongly believe that we need to get more affordable energy here. I know we need economic development, but as I'm not, I'm not against working with Canada and working across um, lines to try to get more affordable energy, especially renewable energy, into New Hampshire. But as Northern Pass is conceived, I don't agree that that's exactly the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to work with, to see what changes we could make in that Northern Pass idea to make it work in a better way um, than destroying our environment. I'm an outdoor person. I love to hike and bike and and uh, ski and do all the outdoor things. I love our mountains. I love our, our lakes. I think we need to protect them. And I think we they also are economically exceedingly important and I draw for our, our uh, tourism. Right. Certainly Wolfboro so, being uh, Wolf quite Borough, the tourist des destination. I'm curious, very definitely. the opioid crisis uh, is all over the state. To what extent uh, does that uh, touch uh, a town like Wolfboro, which is fairly well to do and you have a lot of people coming in in the summertime uh, as well? It's not quite the same dynamic as the rest of the state, but what have you seen there? It, it is very definitely a major issue and it's one of the major issues that in our discussion groups that everybody brought up. Mm. We're very concerned about it, and we're especially concerned because we know that Medicaid is one of the key ways of fighting it, and, and if we lose Medicaid funding from Washington and the, and the state takes cuts, the, the people are very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. And Wolfboro definitely has an opioid crisis right along with the rest of the state. It overdoses and whatnot. This is yes. something that local business yes. owners are see this, seeing this in the bathrooms and things. That's a. I'm not sure so much the bathrooms. I talked um, one of our at one of my uh, parties. We had a, a person who was an EMT, and she talked a great deal about the issues that they're having with the needles and hmm. things. So. All right. Uh, any other top priorities when you get up there to Concord? Not really. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid to I'm going to get sworn in, right? I'm, I am working on that, <laughs> but it is it is a. Um, it's very exciting, and I'm, right now I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit big picture. I can't say I'm for this bill or that bill yet because I don't know the details within those bills. And so I, I need to get there, and I need to do some homework and really get up to speed. All right. State Representative-elect Edie Damaris of Wolfboro, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right.